Porter. Mr. Anagnastu, would you take the roll? Sure. Uh, Mrs. Bissell? Here. Mr. Grozan? Here. Mr. Miko? Here. Mr. Roberts? Here. And Mrs. Hausen? Here. All present. We're all present. I'm going to wait for uh, Cameron. It is appropriate that we have a flag presented for us to say the Pledge of Allegiance. So now that we have a flag on the screen, I'm going to ask everyone to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United of States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next on our agenda is our district goals, and our district goals are academic achievement and growth, financial prudence, and community engagement, and certainly with the uh, state of affairs in our city, our state, and our country, all three of those goals will be challenged, and we will meet them. Uh, for the public, I do want to announce that um, Amended Substitute House Bill 197 was passed recently and signed into law by Governor DeWine. And in Section 12 of that uh, bill, uh, it was approved and allowed that during the health emergency in Ohio, uh, public bodies such as ours, a school board, are allowed to have their meetings uh, virtually or through teleconference uh, as long as we make sure that the public can view that and uh, as much as possible can uh, participate. Uh, public comment is difficult, but we did uh, do that virtually, so we'll have that at the appropriate time. Um, but I did want to let the public know that uh, at least until the emergency order is lifted or December 31st, uh, we are able to have our board meetings uh, virtually through the uh, video conference. And that does bring us to uh, public comment, and I'm gonna jump over to that. And I currently have two. Uh, the first one is from Greg Modic, and Greg is asking about why the school district is choosing to do the bare minimum, only math and ELA to teach our children in these trying times. Um, so I'm not going to read everything word for word. We do have his public comment, and we can respond to that specifically. But I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Riba to comment uh, from the district's perspective. Cameron? Thank you, Mr. Mikko. Uh, yes, we uh, did have two community conversations. I'll share where those are housed, where people can look at those. But in terms of, if I understand the question correctly, um, at the elementary level, uh, we are providing ELA, English Language Arts and Math, tic-tac-toe boards, uh, where, we're where we're sharing with families of students in grades K to six, um, that there are some must-do activities in English Language Arts and Mathematics, in addition to the suggested um, reading each day and math practice, um, that you have to do at least three activities. You have to do the center square, uh, and then you have to create a tic-tac-toe, whether it's diagonal, uh, vertically, or horizontally. Um, and then after that, you can expand and do uh, more um, than you would like. Um, but there's a couple things that maybe we didn't clearly state or can reiterate. Um, we are still addressing social studies and science just because we don't have a specific tic-tac-toe board for that. Uh, our teachers are integrating it into the English language arts, so they will be maybe reading or writing or having other English language arts experiences related to the content that would have been covered in the third trimester that they've missed at, at the elementary level. So it's not that we're ignoring social studies and science, it's going to be as an integrated approach, like it is predominantly in our primary grades, um, but a little be integrated uh, in the upper grades as well. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that, you know, just because we're creating a, a tic-tac-toe board for the masses, it doesn't mean there's not going to be additional ex experiences or activities for our students uh, that are in third, fourth, or fifth grade gifted mathematics. Those will be provided as well, um, as well as our students that are receiving Title I services or special education services or our English language learners. 
So as I hope we can all understand, providing the level and quality of instruction that we did in our buildings in person cannot be replicated, but we are looking at um, how we can provide that in a remote setting. Um, and I, I know the comment was made of doing the bare minimum. Um, I, I don't agree with the fact that we're doing the bare minimum. I think we're doing exactly what we feel is in the best interest educationally and social emotionally for our students. And what I would ask families to do is, um, I know we're trying to all understand and get our questions answered, but let's experience it for a week. Um, we're gonna have this live on Monday, April 6th. Let's experience it. Um, and then if we need to problem solve and enhance, we're always willing to do that. Uh, if, if there's areas that we fall short that we need to improve, we'll do that for the next round of tic-tac-toe boards or lesson planning. Um, but I think we've got a solid plan. This was done in the collaboration with our teachers. And I would like to just say that our teachers have been working extremely hard to recreate as much as we possibly can education in a remote learning setting. Um, and, uh, you know, we're ready to roll that out and support our kids uh, through that remote learning platform moving forward. Cameron, the Mike DeWine had made a comment yesterday about each student should go back to the grade that they were already in. Is that a conversation that we need to have or is everybody going to move forward? I'm not a big social media guy, but I believe that was an April Fool's joke that uh, somebody put out there as a tweet. So no, and but the, but Mr. Grosan, that was an, a question that came up a handful of times. Um, we are not looking to uh, hold any kids back um, uh, or retain students based on the closure. Students at the secondary level that may be failing courses or, or were on track to fail prior to this, they'll probably still be on track uh, to fail unless they work with their teachers and we have given permission uh, for students to turn in and get work graded that were at risk to fail third quarter or uh, at risk to fail the course or semester because we won't collect fourth quarter grades. So we're gonna be working with those students. But if students were on track to progress to the next grade level, um, they'll still be on track uh, regardless of the closure. Okay, we're gonna move on to the second question. Uh, and the second question is, from uh, Jess Koza, and her uh, question revolves around students with disabilities, uh, and she has some questions uh, regarding that, uh, as far as the services we're providing, as far as intervention specialists, physical therapy, occupational therapy, et cetera. Um, again, I'm not gonna read it word for word. Uh, Cameron, if you could comment on it, and we'll follow up with Jess uh, with specifics. Thank you, Mr. Mirko. Yes, we, um, special education, we are going to provide special education services remotely, just like we're providing general education services. Um, we understand that for all of our students, they are not receiving uh, the same education that they did in person. Um, that's true for special education as well, but special education services are overseen by federal law. Um, and as you said at the beginning, House Bill 197 did provide a variety of exceptions and uh, adjustment of the rules uh, for the state of Ohio, but special education law, federal law, has not relaxed any of its rules. Um, so we are still going to provide the same um, uh, or, or services in a remote setting the best that we can. The guidance that we've gotten uh, from the state and from the government is that we need to make a good faith effort to provide special education services to all of our students. So uh, one of the things that we've directed all of our intervention specialists to do is to personally contact um, all of our the parents of students that are on their caseload. Um, so in the next day or so, uh, teachers will be contacting parents. Uh, they'll be talking about the IEP goals and objectives. They'll be talking about how are we going to prioritize this. Just like in general education, we've asked our teachers to prioritize what are the critical and essential standards and, and questions that we need to answer before the end of the year. Um, our related services, so when we talk related services, that means our occupational therapists, physical therapists, our behavior specialists, um, our speech language pathologists. They are working on how they can, based on student needs, either provide guidance in terms of activities and supports in a remote environment, whether doing a, a Google Hangout like we're doing right now to provide small group group or uh, individual services, 
or, or whether that may be true telehealth um, services for students. So it's difficult to answer global questions about special education because there's so many unique needs of our students. Um, so that's where I would encourage um, uh, Jess and all of our uh, parents that have students that are on IEPs that are receiving services. If after you talk with your intervention specialist, you still have questions or concerns, um, you can talk to your special education coordinator. Uh, that would be uh, Drew Kismikis at the high school and Sarar. Uh, that would be Megan Serso at the preschool in Chapman, and that would be John Henry at the middle school and the remaining elementary buildings of Kinsner, Moraski, and Whitney. Um, so we're gonna partner with you, we're gonna work with you. As I said in the first question, uh, we are gonna have to live through this a little bit um, as we work together uh, to look at what special education services uh, we can provide in a remote setting um, and what those will look like for our students. But in both situations and in all situations, we're always going to work in the best interests of our students and provide the most services that we possibly can in an environment where we can't have physical or human contact with uh, other people. So um, we'll continue to work and reach out personally to our parents that have students that have individualized education plans. Um, I know it wasn't a part of the question, but it did come up quite a bit. Uh, we do have students that have 504 plans. Um, 504 plans are not focused so much on instruction, they're focused on accommodations or modifications. Uh, those will still be in, in place um, and we'll be working with uh, our staff on applying and, and utilizing those accommodations and modifications in this remote learning environment as well. Okay, and then there was a fourth, or I'm sorry, a third public comment from a person by the name of Ruba Taya, but we're, there was no question. So we do have that person's email address and we'll follow up to make sure uh, any questions are answered. I do wanna just uh, reiterate what Cameron said that uh, we are going through this every day and we're gonna make decisions every day to do what's in the best interest of our students. We just ask for people to be patient as we work through it. Uh, whatever decision we make, the goal is not to provide the minimum. The goal is to provide the best education that we can, understanding that the circumstances certainly are not ideal. Um, but that's the last public comment we have. Again, it was important to the board and to all of us that uh, even though we're doing this virtually, we at least have the spirit of public comment and give our, uh, our uh, public, our citizens, an opportunity to interact with us. So we'll, as long as we continue to do this uh, virtually, we'll, we'll continue to try to have that ability. Next on our agenda is Treasurer's Report. Mr. Anagnostu. Thank you, Mr. Mikko. And hello, everyone. I hope everyone's staying home is safe and healthy. Um, for the treasurer's report, I do have a few items for your consideration tonight. Uh, the first, which can be found in item A, acceptance of donation of new uniforms for the marching band and reimbursement to the Strongsville Instrumental Music Boosters for a portion of the total cost coming out of the Student Activities Fund 399.01, which is the Instrumental Music Student Activities account. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the treasurer that the Board of Education approves the Strongsville Instrumental Music Boosters donation of new uniforms for the marching band and color guard, including raincoats, plums, shoulder drapes, and a digital banner with a total value of $98,191.69. Be it further resolved upon the recommendation of the treasurer that the Board of Education approves a reimbursement of $50,000 to the Strongsville Instrumental Music Boosters to offset a portion of the total cost. The funds will come from the Instrumental Music Student Activities Account 39901. These funds were raised throughout the years for the purchase of new uniforms in which the current uniforms are 15 years old. Um, this will require a separate vote as it's off the consent calendar. Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Motion by Mr. Roberts, second by Mrs. Housem. Any discussion? 
I just want to uh, highlight that uh, we at our last board meeting we saw the uh, prospective new uniforms and they are outstanding and we're looking forward to it and then for the uh, taxpayer I want to highlight that these funds uh, these funds are coming from either donations or they're coming from student activity funds they're not coming from the general fund um, but this is a worthwhile investment uh, for our our band uh, Athletes, they're not athletes, band uh, students, our musicians, and I'm sure the community is going to appreciate and enjoy them uh, when we're at the football games this fall. I have to say yes. Hearing none, George, would you take the roll? Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mrs. Housen? Yes. Mrs. Bissell? Yes. Mr. Grozan? Yes. And Mr. Miko? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, my next item is item B, Student Activities Program Budget Revision. Uh, this is a revision to the Strongsville High School Instrumental Musical Booster Student Activities account. Although they had the cash to pay for the uniforms, we didn't have all the cash budgeted at the beginning of the school year. So now it's this revision is budgeting, is increasing their budget to the available cash so the reimbursement can be made. And the re, the Revision can be found in Exhibit A. Um, exhibit C, or Item C, uh, Exhibit B, grant approval. Uh, be, a, be a result upon the recommendation of the treasurer that the following grant be approved for fiscal year 21, which is next school year. Uh, the State of Ohio Bus Purchase Program Award. Uh, this, is, this was in the biennium budget of the governor uh, where they were reimbursing for, for, for a new, so districts can buy new buses. Um, our portion of it that we'll get reimbursed for is $7,197. Uh, we have to opt in yes or no that we're going to accept this grant by May 15th. So that's why it's on the agenda now. Um, so that the language behind it can be found in Exhibit B. And then Item D, amendments to the permanent appropriation. And it's for, which can be found in Exhibit C, which is for two items. One for the instrumental music boosters and uh, adjusting their budget. Then also there was a state reallocation and federal funds for Title III. And if there's any questions? If, if not, that concludes my report. Thank you, George. Uh, section 7 of our agenda, superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Mikko. Um, you should see uh, on the screen now I shared uh, a slide with everybody. Um, as you said at the beginning, Mr. Mikko, we're, we're in uh, unique times and uh, uh, you know we're working hard as a school district to help support um, our students in this remote learning uh, environment. So I did want to give a little update. We've been um, online uh, uh, for a long time today. We've been had three uh, virtual chats, one with our staff, one with our preschool and elementary parents, um, and one with our middle school and high school parents. Um, and so all told, we probably spoke to over 2,000 families today uh, over a, a web chat um, and uh, nearly three quarters of our staff. So got a lot of information up there, but just wanted to reiterate uh, to make sure we're all on the same page that the governor has extended the closure of schools um, uh, through May 1st. So the first opportunity we have to be back in school is on uh, Monday, May 4th. Um, and so as we've talked about up until this point, uh, we've been acting and working on a, a, a platform for the six days before spring break and the five days after uh, that students would engage in educational opportunities or suggestions that we provided to engage them throughout that time period. Um, as I said earlier today, that was done strategically uh, so that we could be thoughtful and understanding of our families as they uh, adjust to a new normal and, and figure out and work through the kinks and the 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 nuances of how do we have, we're all at home now working with kids. We didn't want to add the stress of packets or work or graded assignments to that. And so we wanted to give that adjustment period. And we also wanted to be thoughtful in our remote learning plan um, so that we can best meet the needs of our students. So that remote learning plan is going to start on Monday, April 6th. So we're moving from educational suggestions and options to educational uh, requirements and clear pathways for learning that are done on a weekly basis um, and I'll share a little bit more about that in, in a second um, and as it says on the slide our overarching focus 
is how we can provide educational experiences and learning opportunities that are on key learning standards um, and essential questions left in our content so that we can reduce any gaps that will be there so students can find success as either we come back on May 4th or we come back uh, for the 2020-21 school year. If you're looking for information and having questions answered, uh, we've tried to put a lot on the website for you. Um, and I'm gonna go over and you should be able to see the website now on your screen. Um, but if you go to the district homepage, uh, or if you go to any building site, we've set it up the same for every site. These first two links that you see are key. So the first link called extended closure information, if I click on it, you will see every communication that I've ever sent out since uh, coronavirus first uh, had a case in Ohio to the email communication I just sent out today. Um, and Dan has done a great job organizing this website and you can see he's even given you um, headers or bullet points of what I talk about in each one of these communications. So you don't have to find the email, you can go to this site and look and see, okay, I know he said something about breakfast and lunch options, oh here's something on March 29th, click on it and you could see uh, the information there, um, as well as some additional FAQs that are there. So that'll be there permanently and it's also in the headlines as you can see down here. The other part, and this is gonna be important as we move on to April 6th, is this website that's called Remote Learning Plans and Resources. Now, up until this point, our families may have been receiving emails from teachers or getting on Unified Classroom or Google Classroom to see what the educational options were. Well, we wanted to put everything in one spot. So if you want a refresher of what remote learning is and why, why we're doing it and how it's gonna work, uh, it could, you can see that there. You can also see that teachers for every day that is scheduled to be a school day based on our district calendar, teachers will be holding office hours. These office hours are not for the purpose of providing direct instruction, it's for the purpose of answering questions, providing clarification, um, helping support students or families. Our expectation for our teachers is still that if you email a teacher, uh, they'll get back to you within 24 hours, um, but know that they'll be sharing if they haven't already their office hours and that's a time where you know, hey, the teacher's either gonna be online uh, where I can chat with them, they're gonna be on email, whatever it may be uh, to help support our students. Um, if you scroll down here, there's some resources to support learning. Uh, Dave uh, Binkley, our technology director, has done a great job. As, uh, he, we have over about 1,500 Chromebooks that are ready to be distributed tomorrow uh, to our families that signed up. Um, he'll work to help out any more that need to be distributed after that, but that information's there. Uh, if there's paper copies you need, we're going to provide paper copies at each of the elementary buildings on the doors starting Wednesday, April 8th. Uh, but if you're a middle school or preschool or high school student and you want to make some copies if you feel that's necessary, but you don't have a printer at home, um, you could see that uh, Staples and Strongsville is offering some services and options uh, for that, as well as if anybody doesn't have free wi have Wi-Fi at home, there's some options through Spectrum or Comcast to get that. But here is where everything is going to live here at the bottom in terms of remote learning plans. So if I am a kindergarten student, it doesn't matter what building I go to, I'm gonna click here and I'm going to see the tic-tac-toe boards for kindergarten, for ELA and math. Um, if I'm in the middle school, I'm gonna click on the middle school link um, and you'll see the learning plans. They're organized by grade level and by course. So if you're a sixth grader, all you have to do is click on the sixth grade tab, look at your fourth quarter schedule, find the classes and link to the learning plans that you have in front of you. Uh, please make sure our middle school students, we do run quarter classes, so please make sure you're following your fourth quarter schedule for those that are in the wheel. And then high school uh, will be there. It's organized by department, then by teacher, then by course. So I've used the example multiple times today. If I have a math course, I'm going to go to the math tab. Um, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to say, hey, Ms. Hostler is my math teacher. I'll find Ms. Hostler. And then I'm going to say, I'm in Ms. Hostler's Algebra 1 class, and you'll see the links that are there. Um, and the lesson plans are there for the week. A um, couple other things on the lesson plans or the remote learning plans I wanna share with you is first of all, they're organized by week um, at most of the levels. So you'll see a column for April 6th, uh, but that, uh, and those will be ready at 8 a.m. that Monday of the week. Then you'll see another column for April 13th and so on and so forth. So some teachers have the whole month of April done um, and you can see everything for that course for the month of April and you can work on it as uh, it works for you. 
Um, some teachers will be working where it won't be available until uh, the Monday at 8 a.m. of the week uh, that it is due. So it maybe it's April 13th that it'll be available. So check back, look back. Don't feel like you have to do everything in April 6th. Uh, if you feel like, hey, I really like math, I want to complete all of my math work for the month of April and do that first, and then I want to move to science, however that works, you can do that. Um, and teachers will be communicating with our kids how they can submit work. I mean, although we're not grading it, they can provide meaningful feedback to our students um, uh, on their work. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, some teachers uh, will also be doing like we're doing now here as a Google Hangout. They may say, hey, if anybody wants to uh, learn some additional uh, information on this topic, I'll be on the Google Hangout at this time if you want to hop on. Uh, that's, they're more than welcome to do that, but what we strongly suggested to all of our teachers is they record or use video uh, technology that can be accessed at any time. So if you think of YouTube, I can go to YouTube and watch a video on how to fix my dishwasher at seven in the morning or at midnight if I wanna learn how to fix my dishwasher. Um, and we wanna give parents and families and kids that flexibility that if we use a Screencastify, which is an app that we use, or a Flipgrid, um, that we're able to do that. We're able to share a link with kids or on our page Kids can go on and see us teach uh, at any time of day and get the support that they need during the lesson. Because one of the things that we have to consider is not everybody has access to the greatest Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi at all. Not everybody has access to the bandwidth to sustain multiple devices going at once. And not everybody has access to multiple devices. So if I'm a family and I have three or four children and I only have one device, um, it's difficult for us to say as a school district that third grade needs to be online at nine o'clock to get this instruction if I have three other kids, one device, and everybody else is doing nine o'clock for instruction. So uh, that's the work that we've done with our teachers to, to share um, and memorialize instruction so kids can access it at any time. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share uh, in terms of, uh, oh, before I go uh, to the website, the other thing I wanted to share is if you didn't get a chance to log in to our uh, virtual community conversations here, if you go to our webpage, you could just go to technology. Um, as you see there, there's SCS TV. And this is where you're probably watching us now if you haven't downloaded Boxcast to your uh, Fire Stick or Apple TV. Um, but as you can see there, our community conversations for preschool, as well as our community conversations for middle school and high school are there. So if you would like to uh, take a look at that, uh, they're there for you to see. We answered a lot of questions today, and we are going to repeat another set of community conversations next week, same time. So 1 p.m. will be for elementary and preschool students, 3 p.m. for middle school and high school students. We will address the questions we didn't get to today, as well as new questions uh, that came in to keep our community informed um, and in the loop as we progress in uh, a remote learning environment. Um, the last couple things that I just wanted to mention as I go back to the slide here is breakfast and lunch is continuing to be provided for our families in need. Uh, we are still di distributing breakfast and lunch for uh, five days a week worth of meals. However, we're only distributing them on Mondays and Wednesdays. So if you come on Monday, you'll get a couple days worth of meals. If you come on Wednesday, you'll get the last of the week. Um, but uh, the pickup is at Strongsville Middle School from 1130 to 1230. Uh, we have invited parents and families uh, of kids that are in need. Um, however, we understand because of the number of closures, the number of people that are out of work or have had greatly reduced hours, that you may not have been in need in February, but now you're in need now. We're here to help and support you. Um, so please reach out to us. Um, you can go to our website, go to uh, Food Services, email our Director of Dining Services, Chef Mike, or if you can't find that email, just email me and we will get you in the right direction um, to provide the meals to our kids uh, and our families that need that support. Um, and just for our community, please know that uh, for the meals that we provide, uh, for a, a portion of these meals, uh, we do get subsidized for the meals for students that are on free lunches. Um, so we are providing that, but we are still uh, getting subsidies for providing those lunches to our students during that closure. Um, and just kind of highlighting a few things for the House Bill 197. There's a lot of educational related issues. We could spend the next hour going through them. Uh, I'm not gonna do that to anybody, but a couple highlights that I wanted to, to mention, two of them are on the sheet. 
The first thing is the governor has eliminated all state testing for the entire school year. So any end of course exams, any uh, air test as they were formerly known, uh, third through eighth grade uh, will not happen this school year. Uh, as well as because of that, uh, for families that have kids in third grade, there will be no third grade guarantee. Uh, what that meant, if kids didn't achieve a certain score on the third grade uh, English language arts state test, or didn't get a certain score on an alternative assessment, they could be retained, or they would be retained um, as a third grader. They have waived all of that and said the school district has the right to determine um, retention and, and grade placement decisions and there'll be no third grade reading guarantee. The other question that's not on there is graduation. Um, what they have done with graduation because they're canceling the, the test, we have some students that are seniors that may not have the full 18 points to graduate based on getting certain points on end of course exams. Uh, they have said to school districts, um, the high school administration in consultation with applicable teachers and counselors can make that decision based on students that were on track to graduate prior to the closure. So uh, we will have a local decision to determine, uh, and the high school has already developed a plan and shared that with me today about the criteria they're gonna use to determine if students were on track uh, prior to the closure uh, that maybe don't have all of the points, whether or not they will still graduate. And we'll obviously be working with our families closely for those applicable students. And then finally, based on the governor's order, uh, all district playgrounds and our facilities are closed. There's signs up, um, but just as I sent out, uh, I believe it was last week, uh, unfortunately, we did have a, a number of instances where we weren't able to follow uh, the social distancing guidelines. We had a lot of uh, sports, team sports going on um, on our athletic field. So for the time being, we've closed our athletic fields at the high school and at the middle school. Uh, we will review that decision on a week-to-week -week basis um, and determine whether or not we'll reopen that uh, for the community. Um, so those are the, there's a lot of information and there's a lot more I can share. Check out the virtual community conversations, lots of answers there. Check out the other emails that I've sent that are on the website uh, to get in the loop and always feel free to reach out to, to me or any of my, our administrative team um, if we can be of any help. We don't want you sitting there uh, not having the answers to your questions, and we'll get back to you as, as soon as we possibly can. Um, so Mr. Mikko or the rest of the board, if there's any other comments or feedback or questions, I'd be more than happy to entertain them at this time. Okay, with that, I will continue on with business services. We do have one item for you, uh, resol resolution of intent to participate in winter use contract for the Ohio Department of Transportation Cooperative Purchasing Program for sodium chloride or rock salt. Uh, be it resolved upon my recommendation that the operations manager enters into agreement between Strongsville City Schools and ODOT for the purpose of bidding for rock salt. Uh, the contract to be in effect beginning September 1st, 2020 and terminating April 30th, 2021. Funding to be from the general fund supplies materials for custodial and it can be found in exhibit D. Any questions on that one? All right, uh, for curriculum, we have for your consideration the approval of summer school dates for the 2019-20 school year. Be it resolved the recommendation uh, that the elementary and secondary summer school dates for the school year be approved. Uh, elementary dates from June 8th to the 25th and secondary summer school June 8th to July 2nd. We are still planning on having summer school. Um, summer school at the elementary is by invite only. It's to help support our students that are on a reading improvement and monitoring plan um, um, to help support and develop their reading skills over the summertime. Um, secondary summer school is a credit recovery program as well as uh, summer PE and other courses that we've offered. Um, so this is, we're still moving forward and planning for it. But again, there's a big asterisk next to this because it's all dependent on um, the stay at home order, mass gatherings, things of that nature. Uh, a good percentage of our secondary summer school is virtual. Uh, so we'll be able to continue with that no matter what, but summer PE, other of our in-person courses are subject to the rules that will be under in the month of June uh, for summer school. Uh, and then number two, we do have one correction for you. Uh, be it resolved upon my recommendation that the correction be made to the agenda in June 27, 2019 under curriculum number eight, Ohio Online Learning Program. 
uh, increase the approximate cost from 60,000 to 80,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Um, that will help us cover increased expenses we've had in that line item um, this year. So questions on curriculum. Okay, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our assistant superintendent, Jenny Pelko, with the human resource report for this meeting, Jenny. Thank you, Dr. Riva. Um, under human resources this evening, I have the following items for your consideration. Uh, under D1, we have the resignation of an administrative staff member, a resignation of a certificated staff member, and a resignation of a non-certificated staff member. And under D2, we have appointments for an administrative, um, two administrative staff members. So I'm excited to um, share with you that Sean Collins has accepted um, the high school assistant principal position um, for next year. And William Wingler will be our new high school principal um, for the 2020-2021 um, school year. And typically we would have them here to um, meet and to see, but we'll do that at a later time when uh, we all can be back together in person. Um, and then I also have an appointment for a certificated staff member. Um, Nicole Hackman will be moving to um, seventh grade English language arts at the middle school. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Jenny. And with that, that concludes Mr. Micko, the superintendent's report. Thank you, Cameron. I do want to uh, congratulate Bill and uh, welcome him as our next high school principal. We're all very excited to have him here and uh, we're also very proud of Sean Collins as he uh, continues his career and becomes a uh, assistant principal and congratulations to Nicole and uh, we're looking forward to having all those uh, new people and we're looking forward to being able to congratulate them in person and that will uh, that will eventually happen and uh, so that we can publicly uh, thank him. Uh, uh, Mr. Mueller, we thank him for his service uh, at the high school for the past year uh, and really appreciate all he's done, especially considering the, uh, uh, that he's uh, still principal during, uh, during this stay at home uh, time or stay at home period, which is more than a little bit challenging. Any questions from any of the board members on uh, the agenda so far? Um, I have a couple quick questions. Um, is soccer going to be in place next year? Is hockey going to be in place next year? And is baseball going to be in place next year? In terms of the sports, uh, we are uh, at, at the mercy of uh, the state and OHSAA. So in terms of spring sports, George, uh, right now the OHSAA has sent out clear guidance that they're extending the no contact period. There's to be no practices, no games, no offsite practices. Uh, there can be virtual discussions or practices uh, or, you know, kind of team meetings. Um, but all sports uh, related activities are canceled through the May 1st uh, closure as well. Uh, OHSAA has not canceled the spring sports season as of yet. Um, so they're kind of taking it one chunk at a time like we are in the school district and like the governor is in his decisions. So spring sports, they've officially canceled winter state tournaments, uh, state, state athletic competitions, uh, but spring sports are still on hold uh, pending future decisions. Um, and then that's we're in the same uh, realm for next school year. Uh, you know, if we're back at school, um, if, we're, we, if we have the ability to get mass groups together as of August 1st when typical whole group practices or in July for summer camps, whatever they may be, we'll do that. But those decisions are out of our hands. They'll be made at the state level. Any other questions for uh, Dr. Riva? Hearing none, uh, next on our agenda is the consent calendar. Action by the Board of Education and adoption of the consent calendar at this point means that all items appearing in this agenda with an asterisk are adopted by one single motion unless a member of the board or superintendent requests otherwise. Do I have any requests? So moved. Hearing none, do I have a motion? Motion by George, do I have a second? Second. Second. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Mrs. Housem by a hair. Any further <laughs> discussion? Hearing none, George, would you take the roll? 
Uh, Mr. Grozan? Yes. Mrs. Housen? Yes. Mrs. Bissell? Yes. Mr. Micko? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Motion passes. Next is Board of Education Other. I'm going to open it up. Uh, are there any others from the board? Rich, I just wanted to point out that today is World Autism Awareness Day. So Wonderful. Just, just wanted to point that out. Now, it, it's important that we recognize that. We do have a, uh, a number of our students that uh, have autism, and um, it's nice to uh, work that awareness and make sure everyone's aware of it. Uh, and so it's appropriate on today to recognize that. So hearing no other others, I will just highlight that uh, the Business Advisory Council meeting on April 17th is canceled and the Facilities Development Committee meeting on April 23rd is canceled. Uh, in addition, as we've said before, the stay at home and therefore the school building closure in Ohio uh, remains in effect until May 1st. Um, so I'm going to ask that everyone stay safe, everyone stay healthy, uh, use common sense, uh, especially as we're uh, going through this period of, uh, of remote learning and learning at home. Uh, we're all working together. Our goal is uh, what's in the best interest of all of our students, and we're going to figure that out every day and uh, constantly get better, uh, recognizing that the circumstances are, are somewhat working against us. Um, but I'll say once again, uh, let's all be kind and compassionate to each other. Uh, in addition to being World Autism Day, uh, April 2nd is the beginning of Ram Navami. So I wish a happy Ram Navami to those uh, who celebrate. Uh, before our next meeting, I wish uh, April, a happy Easter and a happy Passover. And I will uh, wish a generous Ramadan at our next meeting, uh, which is April 16th. Uh, we will announce whether it'll be virtual or not, but I certainly at this point in time anticipated being another virtual meeting. Any other comments for the good of the order? Hearing none, we do not have need for executive session, so I will take in a motion for adjournment. So moved. I'm going to give it to Mr. Roberts by a hair. Do I have a second? Second. And Mrs. Housen for the second. Any discussion? Well, thank you, everyone. We are adjourned at 743. Uh, this was the first virtual school board meeting, and um, I suggest that anybody who has children that were trying to mess things up in the background, you ground them. You told us to do it. You ground them for the rest of the month. <laughs> <laughs>